Hey, what's up everybody? Mr. A here. Uh, here's a problem that you might remember from a while back. I uh, can't remember, maybe chapter 3 or 5. And we were looking at how to solve equations that have fractions. And we explored, you know, adding the terms together by getting a common denominator. And we also explored a different method, which was uh, fraction busting. Right? Remember? Fraction busters. So we're going to get rid of these fractions by just picking a denominator. Okay, if you remember, we're going to just pick one and multiply everything, every term, by that denominator. So let's start with the 4, just, just because, and for no other reason than, than that. So the 4s will divide out there, and I get x plus 3 times 4 is 12 over 5 is equal to 4. And now with only one fraction left, I'll just use that denominator, the 5, and multiply everything by the 5. The 5's divide out in the second term, so I get 5x plus 12 is equal to 20. And at this step, I can just uh, look at this like uh, one of those simple Algebra 1 two-step equations, right? All the fractions are gone, and now all I have to do is move the 12 and then divide by 5. So we'll subtract 12 from both sides. I get 5x is equal to 8. And then when I divide by 5, I get x is equal to 8 fifths. And if you do quick check of your work back in the original problem, that, uh, that solution does work. Okay, and so there's, there's your solution by fraction busting. So here's another one for you. Uh, and this one's a little bit different because now I've got the x in the denominator, which I didn't have before. And we've got to figure out a way to uh, solve these equations where the x goes from being in the numerator, like here, to down in the denominator. So that leads us to learning target 13, which is I can solve rational equations with variables in the denominator. And there's some supplemental practice for you if you need it or want to get some more practice in. So back to this equation. Uh, even though the variable's in the denominator, that looks kind of weird, it's not going to be any more difficult than just what we did with the, the little warm-up problem there, which is to fraction bust. So same rules as before. Pick a denominator. And I'll just start with the 2 because it's the first one. So we'll multiply everything by 2. And I get uh, in this, well, that was silly. Here, the 2's will divide out, and I get 3 plus 2 over x is equal to 4. So it's starting to look better, and I just have one more denominator, so there's not much of a choice, but I'll just multiply everything by x. And here the x's divide out, and I get 3x plus 2 is equal to 4x. And then just uh, one last step in solving this one is going to be to move the x over to subtract 3x from both sides. And in this case, I'll get 2 is equal to x, and I'll just write it as x equals 2. Okay, now with these problems, we want to make, uh, make sure that we check our answer back in the original equation because I have a situation here where in the original equation, if you notice, with the x being in the denominator here, that there is a situation that could arise where that gets me an undefined answer. And if you remember that, that would be if the denominator is 0. So in this case, if this denominator is 0, then that could be bad. Well, it's not, luckily, and um, so I don't have to worry about that. And if you do a check of your work, then plugging the 2 back in for x, substituting, will show that we did the work correctly, and that's the right answer. So take a look at another one. Uh, now we've got two x's. So it seems like it might be a little bit difficult, uh, a little bit more difficult compared to the previous problem, but it's actually not too bad. We're going to use the, the, same, the same idea of fraction busting. So let's just pick a denominator. I like the x, and we'll multiply everything by x. The x's divide out, and I get 4 plus 2x over 5 is equal to, with those x's dividing out, it's equal to 2. And uh, let's get rid of this 5 now. 
multiply everything by 5 times 5 and times 5 and you get 20 plus 2x is equal to 10. So now it's just a simple solve, right? We'll subtract 20 from both sides. We get 2x is equal to negative 10. And then to solve, we'll just divide by 2. So x is negative 5. And again, if you do a check your work, it shows that that is the correct answer. But just to make sure, we want to go back to the original and just look for the situation where I could get undefined. So if the denominators are 0, that would be bad. In this case, if x were 0. But x is not 0. x is negative 5. So it looks like we're good to go. OK. Well, that looks like it is getting a little tougher now because we've got a binomial, the x plus 2. But you know what? Really, it's not too tough because all that we're going to have to do here is just, um, just get rid of the x plus 2 in the same fashion that we did before. So what we're going to do is pick a denominator and we're going to uh, multiply everything by that denominator. And you can, use, uh, you can use any denominator that you wish to start out. We'll go ahead and start with the x plus 2. And we're going to multiply everything by x plus 2, every term. Okay. And when I do that, when I multiply everything by x plus 2, what I'm really doing is multiplying both sides of the equation by x plus 2. But for example, here on the left side of the equation, if I were to multiply this side by x plus 2, I'd have to distribute across this addition. So when I distribute, it's going to be just basically multiplying every term by x plus 2. So in the numerator here, I'm going to distribute here. Uh, no, I won't do that. I'm sorry. Oops. Those will divide out. My bad. And so you get 8 plus, I'll go ahead and distribute this, 5x plus 10 all over 2 is equal to, those will divide out, is equal to 4. So now the last step that I have is to multiply everything by 2. And you can actually make it even more simple at this step by just moving this 8 over, subtracting 8 from both sides. Gets me a little bit simpler situation. 5x plus 10 over 2 equals negative 4. So now if I multiply the left side by 2 and the right side by 2, I've got 5x plus 10 is equal to negative 8. And wow, there we go. So now it's one of those, you know, Algebra 1, two-step problems. 5x is equal to negative 18. And then by dividing by 5, I've got my solution. x is equal to negative 18 over 5. Okay? And you can check your work, and that does work. But I'm going to check for the no solution situation. I want to look back in the original and see what would happen here. What would be the case that would give me no solution? So if x, if I look down here at x plus 2, if this is equal to 0, that's bad. So that would mean if x were equal to negative 2, that would be bad. And luckily, we don't have that situation here. We have x is negative 18 over 5, so it looks like we're safe in regard to uh, the no solution situation. So it looks like we got a, uh, just a couple more. Uh, 